Okay, good morning or good afternoon or good evening. We do have people uh, registered from other countries. Um, thank you all uh, for joining today's webinar. Uh, my name is Zong Tian. Uh, I'm a professor at the University of Nevada, Reno. I uh, just want to let you know that today's webinar will be recorded and I will send out a link um, in case you want to watch it later. Okay, let me uh, first uh, talk about the, uh, the agenda and the speakers. Uh, I will spend about 20 minutes first to talk about a little bit of background uh, of the uh, software development. And I will give you a live demo uh, for the uh, Transync uh, mobile, the mobile part. And then uh, Andrew Jayankura, uh, project manager from uh, the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County in Reno, he is going to share uh, some of his, uh, his experience in the regional uh, signal retiming project. And hopefully yeah, we will have uh, Simon to join in to just uh, say a few words about their experience um, yeah, from, from the city of uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And you are also going to hear from a student's perspective. So we are going to have a Logan Williams to talk about his experience of using the software too. Finally, we are going to have a session uh, about 20 to 30 minutes uh, Q&A. So yeah, you can only ask questions by typing in the Q&A. So you can type in uh, anytime, any questions uh, along the webinar. Uh, hopefully, uh, it, it would be better if you can specify to whom the question is addressed to so that we can best answer uh, your, que your question. Just briefly uh, about myself, I joined uh, UNR in 2004. Previously, I worked uh, at the Texas Transportation Institute. That's where also I got my PhD degree. And also I worked at the Kittles and Associates in Portland, Oregon for about five years. So my education, I got um, a PhD from Texas A&M and master from University of uh, Idaho. So two of my um, professor, two, two of my advisors, you, some of you probably have already recognized their names. Dr. Carol Messer was the developer of Passer 2 and Dr. Michael Kite was the developer of uh, the well-known hardware in the loop system. A little bit about the history. You know, I've been working in, in the traffic signal control field for more than 20 years. You know, when I go to the field, I always wanted to have something so that I know exactly where we are, I am in the cycle. So that as a way to check if the timing is actually running according to what was designed. And the, the very earlier development was just a simple cycle timer. As you can see, this is a very old phone. So I asked somebody to write a simple a cycle timer. So that is basically counts you know, from zero to the cycle length and as a way for me to check if the signal timing is really running correctly. Later, you know, the Android phone came along. Um, so we made a little bit of progress so that we can actually track two cycles at the same time. Then the iOS, the uh, uh, iPad, iPhone, uh, this is where we are now. So I'm going to really show you uh, what we are now with the uh, iOS mobile application, which is called Transync M. Now, the, just a little bit about why, how did I come with this idea, you know, to develop such a tool. So even though traffic signal uh, control traffic signal timing has been around for more than like 50, 60 years. So to me, there we are still facing some major challenges or critical aspects, I call them. So for example, um, we still don't have a very good tool to be able to manage all our coordination timing, you know, in, in an easier way. So I'm not talking about the central system. You know, central system is for monitoring but it's not really for data management purposes. The optimization, you know, we, the, the way we have been doing signal timing is always 
go there to count the cars, count the turning volumes, build a model, run the model. But, you know, we have a lot of signals already in coordination, running coordination. So we already have a lot of information. So can we just quickly, you know, do a quick optimization to see if there are any improvement that can be done, can be achieved without actually going through this entire whole process, counting the cars and building the model. I think the third part is the most important, which is the diagnosis. As I mentioned, you know, this mobile tool is really for me to go to the field to check if uh, there's any discrepancies between the field operations and uh, your timing. And the last part is the evaluation. You know, we do before after studies. You know, after we have done the before after studies, you can show whether your signal timing really improved over the before but it still doesn't really tell you whether you have done the best, whether there's still room to improve. So these are the four things. I kind of summarize them. I call it the critical aspects or challenges or the tool I want to accomplish. Okay, just briefly about TransSync. TransSync uh, was exactly developed to uh, uh, accomplish these four things I just mentioned. So TransSync has a desktop application and a mobile application. Um, uh, each deals with different, uh, does different things. Like TransSync D does the management optimization side. The TransSync M is more of a, a field diagnosis and uh, also do the travel time, uh, tra travel data collection. Yeah, TransSync is a joint effort um, between um, myself at UNR and the TransSync Intelligence uh, LLC in Texas. So it's really a joint effort. I personally, I'm not a programmer. Well, th this last slide, maybe later I can put it on. So these are some of our users, what they say. Okay, now quickly, I'm going to get, give you um, a demo, a live demo of uh, this TransSync M. So I'm going to share my iPad screen. Okay. So hopefully you can see, everybody can see my uh, screen. So I will, I'm going to start with TransSync M. Okay. So you see, I opened a file. So this is what I was talking about, the data management part. In fact, the file is, I created it called a demo.ti. So the data was managed by agencies. You can see uh, I put together all different agencies, Canada, city of Tucson, Japan, Las Vegas, Italy, city of Reno, you know, Germany and China. So what you are seeing here, this is a network in Tucson. This is probably the largest I have seen. So everything is coded. If I keep zooming in, okay? So if I click any, any one of the intersections, you can see there are three timing plans. And then we can get into each timing plan, AM peak, off peak, PM peak, okay? I just pick one. So this will give you kind of a virtual real time status. So basically, uh, if we know your offset, your signal timing, and also your time zero, which is the sync time, then we can kind of estimate roughly which phase is supp supp supposed to be on and how many seconds is already get into that phase, how many seconds left. But you know, in reality, you know, phase can al always get early return, gap out, but in traditional coordination, the coordinated phase, that the coordinate phase, the end of the coordinate phase, we know is a fixed point. So that's really how you check uh, the signal time. So this is the kind of virtual real time uh, of, of one individual intersection. So we manage, organize the, the, the signals based, we call it uh, subsystems. You can see some of the signals are kind of connected. Okay, so these are called subsystems. That means 
yeah, when you do the signal timing, these are the signals we want to uh, time, coordinate. So if I click this icon, that shows this is a 20 second street. Okay, there's AM, off peak, PM, three timing plans. Okay, so I can pick any timing plan. Okay, so here at the bottom, you can also see the virtual real time status of each signalized intersection. So this is the current time. So which phase is supposed to be on? Okay, again, you can click any intersection, you get to this window, you can flip each one of them, you know, to see. Okay, check intersection by intersection. I think the most important, uh, the most important part, and probably you are the most interested, is we call the, this a dynamic time space diagram, where you can just take it to the field. Okay, I'm going to click here. Now you see this time space diagram. It's a dynamic time space diagram. Again, this is showing the current time. Okay, these are the timers, countdown timers. So for this intersection, the main street is red. So maximum, you're gonna have 18 seconds before it turns to the main street. So the, the bandwidth, you know, you can zoom in, zoom out, you know, to see the actual phasing sequence. So in Tucson, uh, most of the intersections running a lagging, deep lagging left turn, so through phase and lagging left, left turn. So this is basically uh, what you need when you go to the field. When you go to the field, to, you want to collect um, travel time runs. Uh, on the top, uh, on the right, hopefully you can see, uh, you can see this, this button, okay? And there's a, this camera icon. So you can turn the camera on or camera uh, off. And then once you go take your iOS device into the field, the GPS, you know, the GPS will pick up the location. Then you are going to see, it's going to start to draw the vehicle trajectory and it just click this button, it's going to record a GPS and the video at the same time. Okay. Now, uh, I don't have actually recorded data for Tucson, but I'm going to switch to Reno. Okay, Reno. And I'm going to show you how it looks like once you take this to the field, how it really looks like when you start to do the travel, travel runs. Okay, so again, these are the signals actually in two cities, Reno versus Sparks, we have two cities. So all the ones that uh, colored red is in Sparks. So the arterial I want to show you is this Wells Avenue, okay. There are two timing plans, the PM plan and AM midday running uh, the same plan. So the, I'm, I'm going to open this PM, okay. So you see there's a historical GPS and the video records. If I click that one, so the device automatically, automatically uh, named the files. You can see these are the names of the uh, GPS files. If there's a video recorded, it's going to show the video icon, okay. So we can put the trajectories all these GPS trajectories on top of the time space diagram. So you can see here, okay. So yeah, these are the trajectories. Um, I don't know um, yeah, whether you have used something like this before. You know, there's another software that does something uh, similar like this, like True Traffic. So it basically as a way to confirm, if I'm in the band, I shouldn't make a, a stop. Okay, if somewhere I made a stop, there must be a reason. So I'm going to actually uh, play a video, record it. So this, this is the one, okay. You can see this is the one, you know, the vehicle was in the green band, but made a stop. So in fact, this is actually over saturation, as you can see, you know, by the end of the green, the queue was not cleared. Okay, 
So this is uh, just uh, uh, visualize the, the, the actual performance. Now, I'm, I click this replay button. So here is the, I can enlarge the video, okay? This is what you, you will see exactly in the field. You, if you go to the field, the, you mount your, your device on the dashboard. This is what you are going to see, okay? Um, we started from the first intersection. See, we're approaching the second one. On the main street, it's supposed to have 28 seconds. So we, you know, you know um, this coordinate phase, it should go to the end. There will be no early termination unless you are running actuated, coordinated, okay? So I'm going to fast forward. So you, you can do this, fast forward, backward, and get to here. So we were in the band, but made a stop. You can see it's all due to this long queue. Okay. So, and you couldn't see the signal head, but it has five seconds before it, it ends. So that means this queue was not really cleared by the end of the green. So this is an oversaturation, okay. So this is a, um, a replay of the recording, or as I told you, this is what you see exactly in the field. We also have this kind of a statistics for this trajectory, you can see the travel time, the travel distance, average speed, and we can even tell you how many bottleneck, bottlenecks, oversaturated intersections uh, you encountered. And we'll show you the location. So in this case, you, we encountered one bottleneck. So this is the, the uh, I showed you the virtual real-time status, the uh, uh, field data collection. So what, there's one more thing I want to show you. There's, there are other features, okay? But the one more thing I want to show you before I will turn to uh, Andrew. So you see there's a virtual GPS. So this is really, you know, to teach students or to show a lay person how to read a time and space diagram, how to explain to them uh, the signal coordination works. Okay, you, you see here, I can place a virtual trajectory. I can place, you know, starting at different part, okay, different direction. Then you can see where you are going to stop. So uh, obviously, I told you, if you are in the band, you shouldn't stop. If you arrive later, you are going to stop. And if you, you have missed the band, you are going to make a stop and then go. And you can also even replay this virtual trajectory. Okay, so I, I, I just thought this is, would be a very good tool you know, to show students or teach young engineers how signal timing really works. I think that's all for my part. As I said, I told you a little bit about the history. This goes pretty quickly. And I showed you, I just gave you this, uh, a demo to give you a feeling how Transync Mobile uh, looks like. So desktop, you are going to see from, uh, from Andrew and from Logan later. Uh, so the desktop uh, part of the application, so they are going to uh, have something to present. So with that, uh, I'm, going, I'm going to turn to Andrew. So he is going to talk about uh, his uh, experience in the signal regional signal retiming project. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Tian. Uh, give me a few seconds. Let me change over to my screen. Um, okay. Hang on. Where is it? There it is. Okay. I think everyone can see my screen. Okay. That's good. Okay. Oh, good, everyone. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the webinar. Uh, my name is Andrew Jenker. I'm a project manager with the RTC of Washoe County. And uh, today I just want to kind of go over some of the experience that we have using the TransSync tool in retiming our traffic signals for the past uh, three years. So with that, um, I'll just go ahead and dive right in. 
Uh, a little about me, I joined the RTCA Wash County back in uh, November of 2016. So I've been here for a little over three years now. Uh, previously, I was with uh, Atkins in the uh, Denver office for a year. And then before that, I was a research graduate assistant at the University of Nevada. Um, I received both my master's and bachelor's degree from the University of Nevada in civil engineering um, several years back. So just to go over what's going to be covered, uh, I just want to kind of go over uh, some of the general overview and quick facts about Reno and Sparks, and then dive right into the experience that we have using TransSync in retiming our traffic signal using coordination, uh, going over uh, the expedited learning process of using the software, um, traffic optimization without traffic volumes, uh, the in-field tra TransSync calibration fine tuning, uh, show you a quick case study of one of the arterials that we did a before and after comparison and some of the agency and public feedback that we got timing the signals and then how we also time the traffic signals in the region. So Reno and Sparks is definitely a growing region here in Nevada. There's roughly about 450,000 residents and it continues to grow. We have a lot of tech uh, companies like Tesla, Apple, Google, uh, Amazon moving into the region. So it's definitely a uh, big generator of employment here in Nevada. And you can see in our arterials, there's definitely an been an increase in traffic uh, over the past couple of years. Uh, there's about 400 traffic, uh, 406 traffic signals in the region. Uh, 273 are in Reno jurisdiction, 114 on Sparks, and 19 outside of the city and in county jurisdiction. Uh, based on federal guidelines, it suggests that traffic signals are retimed on a three to five year basis, but we've decided to do a three year basis to retime traffic signals um, in that cycle. That way we can update traffic signals based on any changes in demand or any um, changes in uh, developments. So that way we can uh, capture and accommodate all the timing and demands that may have changed over the past three years that we have looked at. Okay, uh, just kind of go over the TransSync uh, software um, in our experience, pretty much kind of touching up on what Dr. Tian has said, but it utilizes a desktop and mobile interface and there's an integration between the two. You have the desktop version here, and then you have the mobile app here, which could be used on your iPhone, iPad, or any iOS device. So the tool has been very really helpful for me to teach students on how to time traffic signals. And it's been a very really simple process to kind of show them how signal timing actually do work. Um, it emphasizes basic signal timing principles that are needed to do signal coordination and shows it in real time. Uh, the nice thing about the software is you don't need to do any geometric modeling like in Synchro. All you need is pretty much approach speeds for each intersection and some of the other signal time parameters such as cycle length, base splits, the uh, clearance intervals for PEDs and uh, yellow and all red, ring sequence, offset, offset reference point, and the master clock sync point. And those are relatively basic principles that you can easily explain to a student. And once uh, you put it into the software and run the program, you can explain it as the program is running dynamically to show the students like, hey, this is how it actually works. So I have a quick video here of kind of going over the, the software. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and play this video. Give me one second here. Oh, turn this off. So the students that have been working on timing signals, they are they have had an easier time learning how to time signals. And it's a very simple and user-friendly program, and that's why I've enjoyed using it, um, timing the traffic signals. So here's a quick video of me running through the software. So you can see this is in Sparks. Um, you can see the traffic signal running dynamically. And I'm going to turn on the time of day plan. There it goes. So you can see it's dynamically running. You can tell when the time is running out for each specific phase. It shows your controller timer, your local clock, and your master clock, the phase sequence, your offsets, and then how much time is running left. And you just put your basic time and parameters such as the cycle, offset, reference point, reference to, um, the sequence, which you can change easily by just moving back and forth. 
and then you can adjust your splits, your yellow, and pet timing um, with this screen right here. So with that, <clears throat> if you do this for all intersections, Dr. Tian mentioned that there is a dynamic time space diagram that we use to capture our GPS track and to troubleshoot traffic signals um, if everything has been programmed correctly or not. As you can see here, we have our time space diagram. Um, our, our, our green band is not the greatest, but we take in consideration platoon dispersion, early returns, and make sure that we have the most of the platoon going through the arterial. But the nice feature about this is putting on the camera and there's also microphone access too. So you can narrate as you're driving through the corridor and view taping as you're driving up and down um, your retimed uh, arterial. And there's a video that's just turned on right there. So, okay. So I'm not gonna get too much into detail with this, but I uh, wanted to say that the controllers that we are using in Reno are the NASTEC 900 series controller, version 61. And in Sparks, they're using the Traffic Word 980 ATC controller, version 76. So most of the uh, signals that we are retiming, we are using without volumes. And we have found that to be a more effective and faster way to time signals. And in the end, we are fine tuning the signals anyway. So um, it kind of gets us to where we need it. Um, the ATMS software that we're using that um, we can overlook all the controllers, it's able to generate a split history report for each of the intersections and specifically what time of day we want. So that's how we've been able to generate the splits and the timing that we need in a much more faster way than collecting volumes. We do collect volumes, but for specific instances like there's a new development or there's been changes to the roadway geometry. Um, some of the things that we do when we fine tune that kind of helped us uh, without modeling in Synchro is using some of the parameters and the features that controller has to offer. And we strategize that when we're timing the signals. Uh, some of the strategies such as using either fixed or for, float force off, um, the sequencing of each intersection, whether if it's better to lead or to lag, leading if because maybe we have a short left turn pocket or lagging because we have you know, the platoon arriving late so that that way it will just be green for them by the time they get into the left turn pocket. Um, and then we've also been able to do resurfacing for low volume intersection with high cycles. So we've been able to figure out a way how to maintain a green band by guaranteeing a specific time. But outside of that, we've been able to resurface the minor streets so that way we can minimize delay uh, when there's a high cycle that we need so that we can maintain um, a cycle throughout a whole corridor. And then we've been able to use the NDOT uh, Trina data where they do arterial traffic counts. And that's what we use to estimate our uh, time of day plans. And then when we do our fine tuning process, that's when we can adjust if we need to more add more, ha like a half an hour more to our plan, reduce it by half an hour and so forth. So I have a video here kind of showing a, uh, an infield calibration and fine tuning that we did at an intersection in Sparks, Nevada. Uh, this is where I find transit to be most helpful, especially like I think agencies could benefit this from the most if they don't have a, another tool to check if the signal's in sync or if you've been doing signal timing, uh, you may have put the programming or input the, uh, the timing wrong. This is where you can do the verification is through transit. So, let me go ahead and play this video. As you can see, let me pause this video real quick. Okay, so we have the video of the intersection that's synced up to TransSync. You have your arterial phases two and six, north and south, your lagging left turn phase, and then your minor street left turn um, westbound. So that's synced up with the intersection. And then on the top left, we have the ATMS showing us a live scan of the intersection. So as I play this video, you can see everything is in sync. So this left turn is going yellow, red, and then northbound and southbound goes. And you can see here two and six. So right now it's all synced up. And what I'm about to do is I'm gonna invoke a new time of day plan. 
which will cause the signal to go into transition. And this is where Transic is most beneficial, is if you're in the field and you don't have this program out, you can tell the signal is in sync or not. So if you look at Transync and the signal is not doing what is shown on your um, program, then you know that there's something wrong in the field. So you can see right now it's still in sync, but I'm in a moment here, I'm gonna change the plan. So now the plan's changed. Now it's showing phase eight, but it's not showing that it's two and six still. So now I'm gonna change it to the new plan. And now you can see the signals in transition. 36, 35 seconds off, long way. So that means that the signal is still behind. It's adding more time to the splits in order to catch up and get into sync to where it needs to be. So right here, this is how we know, okay, there's something wrong. Phase eight is up, but in TransSync, it's supposed to be phase eight still, which is not. So that's one way that I find very beneficial with TransSync to, is to verify in the field that, hey, if it's running the way that we want it to be. So now you can see the signal's almost in sync. It's about seven seconds off. And then let's see, now phase one, that phase one goes, and now it's in sync. Phase one and six should terminate together, which is southbound on that, and then westbound should be able to go. Yep, in sync again. So I feel most agencies would benefit using this software um, troubleshooting in the field if you don't have you know all the programs the tools you need to verify that your timing is correct so close this video yep it's still in sync south on left goes okay so I have a, uh, a video of a before and after scenario that we did. Uh, this is in Sparks, Nevada. This is Rock Boulevard. And I'm gonna show you a video of the PM peak that we did a before and after. Um, it's running 150 seconds cycle um, and it's going in the northbound direction. We're starting on the south, going up. And there is, let's see, one, two, three. There are nine signals um, in the corridor. So I'm gonna show you this video right here. Let me go ahead and go on YouTube. Full screen it up. Okay. And I can hear the audio, but there's music going on. So on the uh, left is the after, and then the before is on the right. You can see the time space diagram being plotted right here. Let's try a little bit of volume. There we go. So once you have all the signals um, <clears throat> calibrated and in sync with the program, you can then do the fine tuning by adjusting the offsets, splits, and then just verifying the field that everything is right correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip forward. And I apologize for the video. I think uh, one of the students should have cleaned their windshield so that the camera can focus a little bit better instead of the window itself. So this is a very heavily uh, congested corridor. Um, one of the uh, harder things to time these signals is the signals are very closely spaced. So that was very tricky to retime. But we received many uh, compliments after we timed this traffic signal because it's been, I think, 10 years before we timed the signal. So it's a major improvement. So it took only five minutes to get through the corridor, nine signals, whereas the before condition took you closer to 10 minutes. So we didn't get the volume counts, but you can see the uh, the benefits from all the traffic from all the vol um, traffic and how much time you save. Okay. 
Um, with that, um, over the past three years, uh, the whole single time program cost us about $800,000. We were able to get 250 traffic signals time with new coordination plans. 400 traffic, traffic signals now have updated pedestrian and vehicle clearance interval. And for the clearance interval, we're using NCHRP 731 to uh, do our equations to calculate the yellow and all red. And then MUTCD to get our pedestrian clearance. And it's all done with between the staff of four, between the RTC, Reno, Sparks, and Washoe County, and six students from the University of Nevada that are also assisting with the program. Uh, we've seen a decline in complaints to our traffic hotline. When I first started uh, back in 2016, we were getting constant calls about traffic signal timing. Now we're getting very far and few in between. Most of the calls that we're getting in the hotline are for maintenance issues, such as detection, someone hits a traffic signal pole, or a signal headlight is out. Um, the nice thing about doing it um, in-house is we can immediately respond to any timing issues and accommodate any requests that the agency may have with timing issues. Um, working with students, uh, we were able to get um, students at several locations were in timing corridor to see if there's any deficiencies in our timing and we can uh, adjust them in real time. And one of the nice things too is we have a strong understanding with the controller and its operation. So working with the controller and learning how it works can help us better strategize on how we do our timing plan. Um, most of all, we haven't really got much um, call for compliments. I think once there's something wrong with the signal after we time it, then the calls will come in. But I've heard many compliments so far with the time that we had and it's all been positive. So with that, that concludes my presentation and I will hand the court to Logan. Uh, not the Logan, right? Uh, the Logan, oh, Simon, I'm sorry. Yeah, Simon. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Okay, I'm cutting off now. All right. So uh, next, we are going to have uh, Simon Ramos from the uh, city of uh, Phoenix in, in uh, Arizona to just say a few words uh, about their experience of using the Transing tool. Simon? Hello. Uh, thank you for having me. So, uh, to give you a little bit of background, I started with the city of Tucson uh, back in 2002. So I, I've been in the signal industry for uh, quite some time. Uh, it's been roughly about 2014. I've been exposed uh, with Transync. I've been using it with the uh, city of Tucson. I was actually employed with the Arizona Department of Transportation uh, from 2015 to 2017. And there I, I really started using the uh, Transync software in depth. Uh, we, well, at ADOT, I've used it on 12 different corridors, retiming about uh, approximately 150 signals. Before I left ADOT to the city of Phoenix, we were able to develop a cost benefit savings uh, report and that report uh, resulted out to about uh, just under $55 million in time travel savings to the traveling public. Uh, the software has also helped us uh, within the region here in Phoenix uh, Valley area to help partner with other neighboring agencies that were not uh, say familiar or exposed with the uh, Transync software. We've actually were reluctant to have a uh, one or two uh, workshops here in Phoenix, uh, hosting them to the other partnering agencies. So here at Phoenix, City of Phoenix, we've used the Transync software roughly about 90% of our retiming projects. Um, this is about 300 traffic signals to date. Uh, the staff has found the software very intuitive, innovative, and most importantly, it's been a real time saver, considering that we have approximately 1,200 traffic signals total and about 66 uh, hawk pedestrian crossings. Aside from being a great investment, the uh, other features we enjoy having is the ability to migrate the uh, artisanal files into the TransSync software. Um, we can easily put together grid uh, coordination for, for progression and it's a also a good uh, tool to demonstrate before and after conditions to say non-technical folks. So I, I, there's been many times where I've demonstrated the time, uh, time space diagrams to upper and executive management to show the, the benefits of the before and after situations. So that's, that's pretty much all I've had to share. If, if anyone has any uh, questions, um, 
please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, so next, I'm going to turn to uh, Logan. Uh, Logan Williams is a graduate student who has been working on the regional signal timing project with Andrew. So he is going to share uh, his experience. Logan. Thank you, Dr. Tian. Um, hello, my name is Logan Williams. I'm going to be going over a, a brief introduction of myself and how I was introduced to signal timing uh, through collecting existing data, modeling, current timing plans, and then uh, the steps that I took when developing those modeling plans uh, along Sun Valley, which is an example corridor in Reno, Nevada, and it was the first project where I was one of the leads. Um, TransSync is showcased as the primary tool for my education in signal timing, which began just a little over two years ago. As a mechanical engineer, um, also graduating from, graduate from UNR, I got a taste of a variety of different disciplines and I learned engineering techniques that uh, can be applied to a variety of situations. And it allows me a kind of unique view um, of traffic problems and their solutions. I saw opportunity in the transportation field to gain practical experience in the field uh, alongside my graduate studies. And so I decided to shift my field of study to civil engineering. During my time at UNR, I got opportunities to work on dozens of corridors in a variety of different cities like Reno, Sparks, and Las Vegas, developing new timing plans to help drivers navigate road networks efficiently um, and improve them. I am currently available for employment as I finish my thesis work, which is on implementing bicycle detection in existing controller devices with inductive loop detectors. The first task in modeling existing signal timing in TransSync is collecting existing timing parameters, which are exported from city ATMS sources to Excel files, which can be referenced later. These include the following. During this process, I became acquainted with a variety of terminology that I had never had to experience before. Um, and after navigating the numerous tables and menus in an ATMS program, I was forced to learn where the important information was and which data held less relevance to whatever task that I had at hand. Uh, the data collected was then re-entered into the TransSync program to accurately model the existing signal conditions. It's not a direct port, it's um, something that we, we remake. Knowing these terms and value ranges was useful. Um, when I attended my classes, uh, I was taught how the calculations were performed and where they might be applicable to field operation. When I first started, I also shouted other graduate students as they worked on signal timing projects where they explained uh, where to collect measurements and record locations with ineffective signal timing so that we were able to optimize our process. Once the Excel sheets from ATMS have been exported, uh, they can be processed using a tool that you see developed by UNR which can extract plan information in a clear and concise manner as opposed to some of the ATMS tables in order to avoid being overwhelmed by the large amount of data that's available. And it also serves as an additional resource uh, for double checking information if you have to go back and reference, uh, if you notice that something is off. Uh, this screen shows the user-friendly TransSync window that appears for an individual intersection on TransSync D. This intersection uh, was created before signal time, um, before, creating the intersection in signal timing where you get this window. Uh, you have to input the speed limits of the approaches and precise directions of approaches to, they're verified to match the geographic data. After uh, the signal is placed on the map, then the data extracted from ATMS is inputted on the right to match. And it can be double checked against ATMS using the real-time display, which Dr. Tian and Andrew have also shown. When the real-time display is turned on, the active phasing is geographically displayed with yellow, red, and green arrows as appropriate. Because ATMS only displays the current ongoing signal timing, the comparison must be made when the signal timing plan is turned on in the field. And because of this verification can be done one of two ways, you can either do it with TransSync D and ATMS open on a computer like Andrew showed, or you can also do it with TransSync M and field observation with your phone or tablet um, using iOS software. 
This screen shows the version one window of TransSync D, which is what I was working on when I was performing the Sun Valley project, and that's why I've shown it. Uh, there's a version two, which is updated and it has a similar display, although the map is updated and it takes in the same amount of data or the same types of data. The newer version also allows for a variety in phasing schemes if you have abnormal intersections. And there's a separate tab for notes where information specific to the intersection can be saved, such as overlapping phases. And this interface allowed me to see the direct results of making changes to any one of these parameters immediately. So once all the signals have been made for a corridor, then they're joined together and exported to a mobile file using TransSync M to collect GPS runs on a device in the vehicle uh, for the existing signal timing. TransSync M can collect GPS video and audio files for recording the existing conditions along a roadway, as Dr. Tian showed. The video and audio options may be turned off to save data storage space if necessary. Uh, during this process, I began to realize where issues occurred and recorded ideas on likely causes. I also began to relate the factors uh, from ATMS to the real world impact and intersection response. I learned how timing plans enter and relieve transitions, the effect of pedestrian movements on coordination, uh, and the pros and cons of running any coordination plan at all, which is sometimes not the best choice. Uh, multiple runs are collected in each direction for posterity to ensure that we make account for error and ideally with different runs beginning at new locations within a queue for a variety of different uh, trajectories. This is done for the different times of day when new plans pe reach peak expected volumes for a.m. midday or p.m. The sample corridor uh, is six intersections along Sun Valley, which you can see. It was retimed in early 2019. This corridor passes through many residential and commercial areas to the north, as well as near Truckee Meadows Community College before reaching US 395 to the south. On the left is a map taken from Google of the corridor and the surrounding area to get an idea of what the surrounding area looks like. And to the right is the connected set of signals in TransSync. The green links that you see represent the distance between each intersection, and they be, may be modified to match the curves in the road. Don't have to be straight lines. So Trina data uh, provides directional counts at different points along the corridor, and so I got to investigate that. Um, it allows identification of when to begin new timing plans for the AM, midday, and PM traffic movements as you see the patterns of traffic begin to shift. City ATMS reports, uh, as Andrew brought up, can provide split histories for these time frames once we've identified them, which are used to develop new timing without the need for traffic counts by providing the phases with enough timing based on previous operation results. For this project, the 85th percentile of recorded phase times was used. Uh, as a benchmark and it was increased or decreased as needed uh, for the minor and major phases. This benchmark accounts for traffic flows um, in most cases and it's unaffected by cycles where a phase is never called. Left-hand turns and side street phases, uh, since they're the most critical for evaluation, they are the most likely to need extra time until they were first looked at as opposed to the reference phase movements which can collect any gap out time when those phases end early. Cycle lengths were also considered during this section uh, and multiple plans may be made depending on the possible need for more or less time across phases, which is also based on the split history reports. Natural cycle length of intersections was collected with the same process as the natural phases for plans without coordination. And so we could get an idea of what would be an appropriate cycle length uh, even without needing the traffic counts. Because the natural cycle lengths vary by intersection, the ones with higher demand took first priority when considering new cycle lengths. So the existing signal timing at Sun Valley had three different cycle lengths, um, which you can see on the, the top TSD. There is a 65 second uh, cycle for the top intersection. Then the, the three below it had 90 second cycle and the bottom two had a 130 second cycle, and so there was very little coordination between them, and it caused severe congestion during the AM peak plan when uh, vehicles were moving towards the freeway to the south along the green band. 
All other times of day had no coordination between any of the signals, and so this resulted in high levels of congestion during the PEM peak when northbound traffic from the freeway returned home to their residential areas. The new plans uh, split the six intersections into a northern set of three and a southern set of three, with cycle lengths that allowed for high ratios of coordination. Two to three, where you have a 60 second cycle on some of the intersections and a 90 second on the others, uh, or 90 and 35. Or we also used a three to four ratio, where you had 90 seconds to 120 or 120 seconds to 160. And this was done due to the lower need for large cycle lengths at the northern intersections after distributing a significant amount of the freeway traffic along the lower three. Lower cycle lengths were also able to assist the side street movements with, uh, within the more residential areas of the corridor that people were coming and going. Modifying the cycle and phase splits was the first step toward improving reliability along Sundown. TransSync can be optimized or can optimize bandwidth along corridors based on the same cycle length. And so by splitting the corridor of Sun Valley into two separate pieces, both sets could be optimized with TransSync before coordinating between the two. In a separate project that I had worked on when comparing the results of TransSync's optimization with optimized results collected from Synchro 7, TransSync was found to provide better bandwidth uh, coordination for initial analysis. The optimization results in new values for only the cycle length uh, or the cycle offset and alters the sequence of the phases. It doesn't actually change the cycle length or the splits themselves, which is why that was the previous step. After collecting the computed results, uh, the engineering process begins, which uh, is desired for meeting specific location needs. And this is where I learned that signal timing is an art form. Here are the, the new signal timing plans for Sun Valley after discussing the observations recorded in the initial travel runs and making modifications in the field during implementation, uh, which we did to ensure that the, the timing operated as intended. Making a change may benefit one direction, but it could negatively impact another. And so questions are constantly being asked about uh, the benefits and drawbacks to making a change. And so that's into, it's to ensure that careless decisions don't result in issues that are harder to fix later down the line. Uh, priority of movement is a major consideration and the direction of travel seen between the two times of day are drastically different to accommodate the differing driver behaviors. Noticing and predicting turning movements, cues, and phase gap outs is not a skill that I immediately developed, uh, but during the project I was shown pieces of a system that I had taken for granted uh, by Andrew and Dr. Tian. I learned more about how the factors input impact the real world through this process than any textbook or lecture, as useful as those methods of learning may be. Practical implementation requires seeing the traffic patterns not only in a perfect world, along, according to the plan, but accounting for a real world, which often isn't. Once the new signal timing had been reviewed several times for posterity and discussion, between my uh, superiors. They were presented to hear additional feedback from other professionals. The reasoning behind each choice was never ignored or forgotten because all of them worked together. Although there's never certainly a perfect signal timing plan, the decisions all have logic backing them up. I got to defend my reasoning to professionals as a grad student, which it was intimidating, um, but it was an opportunity that I don't think that many students are able to get. And through these discussions, I was able to find my own opinions and correct some of the assumptions that I had, um, and it would have held me up if I were just doing it on my own. TransSync offered an easy to visualize environment where experimenting with signal time was not only a helpful learning tool, but necessary to understanding and improving conditions overall. After implementing the new timing once, intersection by intersection, to ensure that nothing catastrophic or unexpected does occur, uh, then, then new tra travel runs are collected for comparison. So this is a collection of travel runs during a peak midday period overlaid with the TransSync or the, the time space diagram in TransSync. It's from one of my more recent projects along a major corridor that runs all throughout Reno and Sparks. Video files are attached to each of these trips and can be pulled up easily for reference as Dr. Tian showed. Graphical data such as this can clearly identify locations of importance, incidents, cues, stops, delays, 
and how often each of those occurs along a corridor um, based on multiple trips. They also represent the differences between a predicted model and actual use, since phases that appear in the time-space diagram may not activate if there is no call or end early if they gap out. For these cases where a model and reality don't quite align, travel runs provide records and explanations. Transync can generate reports summarizing this data, which allows for easy comparison between the before and after conditions of a corridor. So in summary, uh, Transync increased my knowledge and experience with signal timing, by making clear connections between reality and the subjects that I was learning in classes. I got to have an impact on the world and prove that my work improves upon previous conditions, even before I finished my degree. I have been blessed with numerous opportunities throughout my college career. I'm very thankful that I had the good sense to take them when they arose. The transportation program at UNR has equipped me with the tools that I need to be successful in this field. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Logan. I think we are perfect, pretty much on, on schedule, on time. Um, I have seen more than 40 questions, but I already typed the answers. I just, I wonder, uh, can the uh, participants see the uh, answers and all the questions? But anyway, uh, you can keep, you know, keep typing in your questions. And uh, I look at over all, uh, all of the questions. I, I guess um, there's a couple of them kind of uh, shared by, um, by many participants. So I will just uh, briefly explain these. Anyway, um, after the webinar, I'm going to send out a link to share both the recorded video and all these uh, Q and A's and also our uh, PPT, PowerPoint files. So a common question asked by uh, several people, whether you know that the transient M, because I mentioned that it looks like a dynamic real time, whether it's really communicating with the ATMS, with the field controllers. So the answer is no. So we call it virtual. So we, we can only tell, you know, at this time, which phase is supposed to be on. So it's not really communicating in real life with, with the controller. Uh, the second common, a common question um, people ask, the, you know, this is always the case, a new product, what is the price and what is the, the how the license work? Okay, in terms of price, uh, in fact, um, you know, our partner, uh, Trans Intelligence, they are handling the sales so the, the, I can tell you the price, but for the details, you really need to contact uh, them. Um, for a single license, that including the desktop and the mobile, the price is uh, about 5,500. Uh, public agencies will get a 10% discount. And that's uh, for a two year, two year license and uh, you get free technical support. So there are no other fees you, you need to pay, but after two years, you need to re, uh, renew. The third common question, you know, the, some people said, uh, you know, a lot of agencies that we already have synchro files, do we have to manually uh, code everything again? So the answer is no, you don't need to do that. So Transync D has a function uh, that you can import the synchro files. Um, you know, you know I, I, earlier I mentioned the, the management side. So this is uh, also the, from uh, how Transync is different. If you use the synchro, probably you have many, many different files. So the idea is, you know, we want to just have a single file, you know, all the timing plans, all the signals in one file. So that's exactly what uh, Transync does. So you can import all your synchro files uh, into the, the, the same, the same transient file. So these are the three kind of uh, common questions that I've seen. And the other ones, I, like, like I said, I already typed the answer. Um, and then you can, you can read the answers later. But I see uh, questions still coming in. Now, uh, while I'm talking, I don't have time to, uh, to type. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. What I'm trying to understand is from cost perspective, it might be might save agencies money if they do not have to collect traffic volume data each time they decide to do coordination on the segment. Well, this is exactly the idea I mentioned, optimization. So if you already have a signal coordination running, uh, you just want to see whether you can do any better. You, you just need to pull out the time space diagram and look at it, run a quick bandwidth based optimization to see whether you can improve. So I have seen so many cases you know, without going through the whole process, so we, we can improve a lot. I think our first phase in Reno, uh, that's exactly the, 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 the same. So we didn't really dramatically change a lot of cycle length and phase split, but we were able to improve significantly because the old timing was just obviously not good. Okay, what other question? Okay, what other tools are used to determine cycle lengths? What tools are used to determine the best splits? Yeah, because uh, um, some of you probably already learned now, um, our optimization is pretty much optimized facing sequence and offset. It's a progression based optimization. We do have many, many other choices, options, but you have to have a, a, a known cycle and split. Okay, the cycle, we, we, yeah, there is one function in, in TransSync. We, we can tell you based on the spacing, what cycle will work the best from the progression point of view, or this is called uh, uh, harmonic, harmonic uh, cycle length, okay? But if you, you really want to determine what cycle can really handle your, your demand, what splits your, um, this is mainly for a brand new signal timing. You know, you want to come up with a new cycle length and completely new phase split. And then you, you know, use some other tools, Synchro, for example, and uh, your HC, HCS, that can also uh, estimate the splits and the cycle. But if, uh, in Reno, our experiences, you know, you don't have to always go to count, counting the cars, counting the volumes. So what we did was we look at the controller, there's a split history. You know, uh, if it's a brand new signal timing, basically the signal was running, uh, run, running free. So you just look at it on average, what cycle would work the best to accommodate that demand. So that's how we did it. So we didn't really counting, counting the turning volumes everywhere. Unless you know, that there's a criti cr critical intersection, we do need to know um, what would be the best cycle. Okay, will the renewal fee be another 5,500? Well, th th this is something like, like I said, you need to talk to uh, trans intelligence or you couldn't see the answers. Okay, there's a uh, one person point out. Also, Dr. Tian, one yeah. of the participants wanted to see your user review slide on your presentation. Oh, I see, I see, I yeah. see. So, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, I will just put this slide here. Uh, we have uh, Sean Quayle from uh, Washington County in, in Oregon. Uh, we have Kevin, Calvin Wayne from uh, Caltrans District 12. So Caltrans is our largest uh, cars customer. And then we have uh, Patrick and we also have Ryan Kalab in Orange County. Okay, rather than pulling data from Synchro, can you export from Trafficware ATMS database into TransSync? Yeah, this is also a question asked uh, quite often previously by um, whoever I talked to, whether you know, we can pull out the data automatically from uh, ATMS and put it into uh, TransSync. You know, it's a long story. It's, here, you know, mostly the, the, the other agencies that we are not familiar with, they don't allow you to access their database. And here in Nevada, um, yeah, we, we do work with uh, Reno, we work with Las Vegas closely, but the problem is they don't know how to get really uh, all the data into a single file. So that's something we couldn't figure out. Uh, if 
you know, theoretically, it, it can be done. If uh, we can read the timing from your uh, central database, so basically, we know your location, we know, we know your signal timing, and then, yeah, theoretically, it can be done. It's just uh, we never had a chance of uh, doing such an experiment. Can the software handle dynamic offsets within the same peak period to account for 15 minute changes in traffic conditions, friction and average speed? You know, this is, is you have to know your signal timing. Signal timing, what I, see, I mean signal timing, so you know what cycle you're running, okay, um, what, what's the offset. But if you constantly change your cycle, and there's no way, you know, there's no way for us to track, you know, whether it's, uh, it's matched or not. Okay, there's a question for you, Logan, I think. In Logan's travel time example, there were certain runs that didn't clear multiple cycles. I'm guessing this is because of high queues, but wouldn't this be addressed by proper cycle length selection? Logan, maybe you can you can you can try. Sorry, I was muted. Um, yeah, so there were cases where there uh, were high queues, and um, you weren't able to clear it through multiple cycles, as partially because it was a, a bottleneck area. Uh, we had to run split phase there based on the geometry of the intersections. Um, and so those are the questions that are uh, brought up when we present these plans and the findings. People point out those and say, hey, why, uh, why do we see this? And so then we're able to have those answers because we have those records. Okay, apparently the, the audience cannot see, they can see the questions but cannot see the answers. Okay, let me just uh, go through this list where I already type in the questions to see anything that I missed, the important ones. Like I said, uh, we are going to uh, assemble all these Q and A's and I'm gonna share with all the participants. Or oh, is there an Android app available? So unfortunately, unfortunately, no, right now it's only on iOS device. So it takes time and effort to develop the Android. That doesn't mean that can, cannot be done. It's just we, we haven't get into that yet. Do you need uh, internet access to use in the field? You don't need, you don't need uh, data or internet. So the you know, iPhone or I, uh, the, the iPad, when you, you make sure you, when you purchase the iPad, is the Wi-Fi plus cellular mode. So that has a built-in GPS. If you only purchase a Wi-Fi only, it doesn't have the built-in GPS. Okay, a couple of questions about communicating with the controllers. I, I already explained. It's not really communicating. It's a virtual real time. Does the time does the time space diagram reflect actual splits in field? And no, as I said, the time space diagram is the timing you programmed in the controller. But if there is a transition, you know there is early return, early gap out, you will notice that. Because, for example, you know, the countdown timer says this phase has 10 seconds left, but in, reali in reality, the phase just terminated. So you know it's uh, early, uh, terminated early. So that's uh, all part of the diagnosis part. Hey, Dr. Tim, real quick, a lot of yeah. people have been asking if they can't see the questions or the answers. Mm -hmm. So there is a little small blue tab under the answered column. If you click show all, it should show, up, show the, um, the responses to the questions. Hopefully okay. that helps out. Answered. Where where is it? Uh, the setting? So no, um, under the Q and A uh, uh -huh. chat log, there is a answered column. Do you yeah. see it? Yeah. Okay. Under each response, there okay. is a collapse all or expand or show all. There's like a blue right under each of the questions. Oh, okay. So yeah, you click that. Every one of them I have to do that, huh? Yeah, so you can see it. Well, <laughs> okay, I missed, lot, yeah. I, I missed that. I uh, wanted to um, just, oh, so Tyler had said that he was also wondering if there was further 
with friction and volume. So um, Transync doesn't use uh, volume counts. Um, I don't think it, we have any, there are any plans to use volume counts um, or friction, even for those situations. That's why we, uh, we head out into the field. And so we make those accommodations um, by coordinating with RTC and the city. We, but there's one question interesting. Uh, the person was asking, uh, where do local governments get the students? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we are very fortunate. Uh, we have a close collaboration with the RTC here. So most of our students, uh, at least my students, um, most of them are well trained with the signal timing. Uh, I, I, it's probably you can see from Logan's presentation. So I would say, you know, he can just immediately take off. You know, he doesn't need any any further training to just take on a signal timing product. He did. I, I'm not sure whether he mentioned or not. He's available. <laughs> so if uh, and and any anybody wants to hire him, try. Yeah, timing coded in the software are assumed to be maxed out. So that that's right because uh, the the coordination timing plan is based on whatever split. If split um, is kind of maxed out. Yeah, well, uh, uh, this question again about a, a license. So one license is per agency and can be installed on more than one computer. Is that true? So the answer is yes. You can install on multiple computers, but uh, on, if it's one agency, only one user can use it at, a, at the same time, at one time. Okay. Well, there are some uh, some compliments. I, I don't have to say that. So the, they mentioned that they really yeah. like the software. Yeah. Uh, but the same person asked uh, the, whether students are graduate students or, or undergraduate students. Usually, I start I start with uh, some undergraduate students to see whether they are really interested, and then gradually, you know. Uh, if they are interested in continuing with a, a graduate degree, so we admit them into our graduate program. So most of our students are, are kind of like that. So Logan started the same way. He actually uh, is a graduate from mechanical engineering. I don't know why he wanted to switch to civil engineering. So he started working as an undergraduate student and then now uh, he is about to finish his master's degree. Okay, there are seven more questions. Uh, Tyler's question, did you already answer, Logan? I, I think so. I didn't, I don't know if I hit all the, the notes. Um, mentioned friction and volume um, for use in, in transing with uh, oh. situation along East McCarran. Um, and so I said that that was something that we, we do by field observation because it's not something that we can handle um, purely by looking at the, the model. Something that does require uh, a field involvement because of the specific situation that is at those intersections. Okay, Ty Tyler, I, uh, probably he, uh, Tyler's question is, about, is more about uh, whether there's, there's a future plans to further update, update you know, to include the volume friction. Uh, yes, the answer is yes. So eventually, yeah, we need to provide a tool so that given certain parameters for, such as volume, you can provide an estimate on the cycle length and the split. You mentioned the use of an iPad. Does an iPhone also work with the mobile app? Yes, so it uh, works on both iPhone and iPad. Will, will the recording be sent to everybody? So th this seminar, I, I told you this webinar was, uh, is record was recorded. And I will send a link to all the registered participants so that you can watch it later. Okay, so Logan, yeah, you, you see that your question? Many opportunities for single engin timing engineers. Mm -hmm.
But I already answered this one. Can transync take inputs from synchro? So the answer is yes. So in synchro, you save it as a, uh, as a UTDF, and, and then you can import. Hey, Logan, there's a lead for you. <laughs> Kim Lee Hor. I just I posted my email address and said yes. I would I would love. It. Um, <laughs> yeah, anybody wants to test our student skills, feel feel free, give it a try. Well, uh, several people asked uh, responded about this uh, employment thing. <laughs> I need a pen or something. <laughs> oh, that one popped up. Uh, yeah, yes, go ahead. You, 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 can, you can go ahead. I'm, I'm... Oh, no, no. I think it's a question for you. Which one? Uh... By the way, is TransSync now used overseas? Oh, overseas. Um... <laughs> The on, only in China, because that's the only um, place that I go often. I have to really show people how it works. Um, some other places I did a demo, but uh, yeah, like Europe is quite different the way they uh, operate traffic signals. So even though this mobile part can, you know, can, can be really, uh, applied in a similar way, but uh, the way they run their signal is quite different. So. Yeah, we in China we have a, I I think a, about seven or eight users. Mostly universities. But recently, their uh, their companies are asking for that. Okay, uh, we still have about uh, thirty minutes or so. We'll see whether there are more questions. Did I miss any? I, I think I have gone through the list, pretty much answered no, all the. No one popped up. One more. How to generate a performance reports? Okay, this is. Um, this... Oh, so Andrew, you already answered. Oh, so uh, I, I, I kind of, so that way we can filter it out. But, anyways, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the performance, I didn't really talk about, spend time to talk about it. Uh, I'm thinking to do a future webinar to talk about the performance measures. You know, you collect the GPS trajectory. Uh, I know I, I also mentioned our performance is, is somewhat different from the just the traditional before after studies. I want to give you a kind of a letter grade or score so that you, you know whether you have done the best with your second timing. For example, you, if you achieve the 90 or above, so that's a score, that's a grade of A. It's not really level of service. You have to, you have to know, you know, um, signal timing is not arterial level of service, the actual travel run. The arterial level of service uh, is affected by traffic volume, but your, your, your actual coordination progression is a, uh, largely affected by signal timing. So I want to have a sort of an index, you know, based on you know, this cycle length and the, the spacing. So I did 10 runs and on average I stopped 20%. Uh, um, the speed I achieved at 70% of the free flow speed. Is this considered a good timing or bad timing? So based on that one, we gave a score. Okay, so there's one agency, uh, Orange County. So they already have a, they call it a corridor synchronization performance index. So we have that built in in TransSync D, but we also have our own uh, interpretation of uh, how this methodology can be further enhanced. So that's something you know I'm thinking to talk about it uh, in a future webinar. You know, performance, the performance mainly is trajectory based, travel run based. It's unlike the 80 SPM, which is, uh, you know, the, what the FHW uh, is, uh, is promoting. It's from different perspective. So this is still based on more of a traditional travel time runs. 
Okay, another question pop up. Performance index you just mentioned for future webinar would be great. Yeah, we will uh, think about it. And uh, we will, maybe we can, we can also invite uh, you know, some other agencies, Orange County, Las Vegas. So they're all working on something. Travel run based, product based performance index. Well, if there are no more questions, I guess we just uh, finish uh, yeah, within the time frame, actually 10 minutes earlier. Thank you again. Uh, thank you all for participating in this webinar again. Hopefully now, uh, if you have ever uh, never seen a, a tool like this, hopefully this is gonna be useful to help you uh, for your, your signal timing work. I, I, like I said, I'm going to share the, all, all the materials I promised and uh, I'm pretty sure you have my contact information. So feel free to contact me anytime. Uh, send me an email about any questions. I'd really like to, to know more you know, traffic signal timing engineers around the country, around the world. Thank you again. Bye-bye. I'm going to terminate. Thanks, everyone.